Hey guys, even here and we have, well, not exactly a physique update, but more of a body fat percent update of Big Ramy at about 5 weeks out of Iron Classic. And you can notice that his glutes are showing some separation, some details. The same thing goes with his quads. From the sides, you can see that his quads are pretty dry, you know, pretty conditioned. Now, is this conditioning better than William Bonex at this point? I don't think so. I cannot be sure, of course, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say so. And uh, is he conditioned? Yes, yes he is. So he's not gonna be off. I'm pretty sure about that. He had enough time to prepare for this. I don't think he's gonna be fat or anything like that, watery. I think he's gonna be just fine. I think we're gonna, we're gonna see probably the best version of Big Grammy as far as conditioning ever. But what am I basing that on? I don't really have any solid, concrete um, evidence to, to support this claim, but I'm just uh, guessing, basically, based on everything, based on him being off for so long, for being aware that his only problem is conditioning, and for having more experience and more years in the gym, so better muscle maturity, being aware that if he doesn't win the Arnold Classic, he won't be qualified for the Mr. Olympia. He would have to win another show, a weaker show, because there's nothing stronger than Iron Classic aside from the Olympia itself. And that would kind of lower the odds of him becoming the Mr. Olympia, the momentum would be smaller. And that would be a huge disadvantage for him if he loses the Arnold Classic. So I'm sure as far as him, as far as he's concerned, he's gonna give it all his gut to be in the best shape of his life. Now it's only the matter of if he misses the peak and if he gets bloated or you know, watery or, or flat or something like that and that can only happen in the last minute, in the last day or two before the show. So, I think he's gonna play it safe. He was lean year-round. He started his prep early, really early. I mean, he, he had like 16 weeks or even more maybe to get conditioned. Why would he risk it day or two days out? I think this is the reason why he started his prep early, because he wanted to get in shape on time. And I think with his insanely large frame and just being the biggest bodybuilder of today and with proving himself in 2017 when he was second at the Mr. Olympia, he didn't beat only Phil Heath back then and he was in a pretty good shape. So if he brings really good shape this time around and it's not even Mr. Olympia, you don't have Phil Heath or Sean Rodens, uh, his biggest opponent is William Bonek who has much, much smaller frame, who used to be a 212 bodybuilder, and the only reason why William Bonac places higher than Big Ramy sometimes is the conditioning that Big Ramy is almost always off with. If Big Ramy brings the conditioning, and I'm sure he will, nobody can touch him, not only the Iron Classic, but at the Mr. Olympia as well, in my opinion. And that's basically only because Sean Rodden is not competing at the Iron Classic, Will he be competing at the Mr. Olympia? Hopefully so. Hopefully so. He said that he's hoping for it. And it's really not about him. I mean, Mr. Olympia and ABB will let him compete after his law issues are resolved. Only after his name is cleared, after he's not considered a alleged rapist. But that is a topic for a different video. I have already talked about that previously a couple of times. Here you can see his physique update, at least uh, what his arms and his overall size looks like. He's big. He's big, definitely. Look at the size of that arm. He's definitely not known for having the biggest arms, especially triceps, but uh, right now he looks huge. He looks definitely big. But that doesn't really mean anything. I mean, Sean Rodden can get uh, fat. He looks like somebody who doesn't even lift, like Homer Simpson that they compare him uh, with in the offseason, at a guest posing, even. And then Mr. Olympia time comes and he's the most shredded guy and he wins the Sando and he becomes one of the 15 Mr. Olympias. So, that's really not an issue, I mean, size. He has everything, it's just about whether he's gonna compete or not, whether he's allowed to compete or not. As for now, you can see this photo of himself, and there is another one, basically almost the same photo, he probably wasn't sure which one is better, so he posted both of them. <laughs> if you exclude Phil Heath, uh, this man right here is the best bodybuilder of uh, today, basically, yeah. When he brings the shape, Nobody can touch him, really. And he can bring the conditioning to uh, an extremely high level. He, you know, he's one of those guys, I'm not sure about how this, how this works, I'm not a nutritionist, but they say some bodybuilders can handle zero carb diet or really super low carb diet and, you know, uh, stay full. And those guys, like him, for example, can get really shredded. The other guys who need to keep their carbs high, 
they kind of have an issue with uh, bringing the conditioning every time perfectly. So he's one of those guys and he can bring the conditioning and he has pretty complete physique. He has really good proportions, nice flow to it and everything. And if they finally allow him to compete again, if he competes the Mr. Olympia 2020 without field heat, he is winning another Sando. I think so. I think so. You can see right here that he didn't lose the size. So he's training actively. I got that info from people who train in the gold gym. He is training. They say he isn't training super hard, but he's there every day pretty much. And I'm sure he's not uh, on at least not high dosages. He is probably maintaining what he has with TRT or something like that. Low dosages probably. I'm just guessing right here. But he is big. He has the size. It's all about uh, letting him compete and him bringing the, the conditioning and winning pretty much anything. Without field heat, uh, he is pretty much unbeatable bodybuilder today. That's how I see it. Whatever you think, tell me down below. And quickly before the last uh, topic of the video, I'm gonna show you Keon Pearson's physique right now. He's not fat, he's just watery. You cannot see the separation, but look at the stomach. I mean, you can see the abs and everything. So he's not fat, he didn't gain any fat, basically just a little bit of water. A little bit of a film of water. I mean, this is normal in the off season. He he looks big. He looks really big. He looks more like a 212 than a classic guy. And I wish him all the luck in 212. And so we come to Patrick Moore, who is probably the most popular bodybuilder of these past couple of months. Everybody's talking about him. He's prepping for the Arnold. He's the dark horse. He can probably surprise us all with the placing. I don't think he's gonna win it. I don't think he's gonna be in the top uh, top three. I think top four is the best case scenario for him. But right here you can see that he looks huge. He looks big. As you can see, standing next to Phil Heat, he looks harder, of course, since he's dieting, but his arms are matching Phil's. I mean, of course, Phil has bigger arms and uh, Patrick has an angle a little bit on Phil, but he's there. He's there. He's actually looking really good. And Phil Heat, yeah, Patrick is his brother-in-law. So Phil Heat probably wouldn't be friends with him if he wasn't that, because Phil Heat is, you know, he's very private and very selective. He doesn't really like other bodybuilders as much, but this man is his brother-in-law, and I think he just likes him. I don't think Phil would care that much if he was only his family. He, he likes him as a person, I'm sure, because they are pretty similar. Until quite recently, Patrick seemed like a normal guy who would never get into an argument with a hater on Instagram, who would never get into any kind of drama, who's always laid back, who doesn't like that much uh, social media and stuff. Somebody who is quite confident about themselves, somebody who is not insecure. But you can see him commenting on his photos and answering to the haters quite often. Not only on his feed, I saw him arguing with a hater on Cedric McMillan's feed. And I understand this. He doesn't have a lot of uh, experience with the social media. I think that's the case. And he doesn't understand that uh, when you respond to the haters as much as he does, that only attracts more, more of that hate. The way I deal with haters, I either ignore them, if the comment is too offensive, uh, I delete them, if I see they do it repeatedly, I block them, so they can't comment on my YouTube videos anymore, and sometimes uh, I just respond and I'm being polite even when they are offensive and even cursing at me. And that's what Patrick should do. If he keeps fighting them, they're gonna keep coming more and more, because they see that he, he likes to respond to that kind of stuff. And people just like to see that. He can keep blocking them, but there is too many of them. So he needs to change that attitude. Uh, but uh, right now, let's talk about his physique a little bit. So I mentioned in a previous video, in a couple of videos actually, that he may be using Sintel with his arms. Why is that? It's because of the proportions. If you take a look at Phil's uh, arms, you can see that they are huge, but they are proportionate to his forearms and his shoulders. I think Patrick's shoulders are just a little bit too small for his triceps and his biceps. His biceps are popping way too much. And I don't think this is a natural look. You would never see this during the 70s or the 80s. You would never think about uh, whether somebody is using Sintel during the 70s or the 80s or 60s or even the early 90s, you can say. But today you see this very often. You can see uh, arms that look huge, enormous, and they don't really look natural. And you're thinking this is just crazy genetics. It's probably not, it's probably not. I listen to the people who actually sell the top quality site enhancement oil and they say that the majority of the pros are buying it. Actually, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, uh, I mean, sometimes, very rarely, but sometimes you can notice it, like in this case. Most of the times you won't even be able to notice it. That's when it is done properly. If you overdo it, 
then it, it can be noticeable, but sometimes they just use a little bit and they look a little bit fuller and you cannot notice it. That's the, that's the proper way to do it. And no, guys, if somebody is separated and if he has veins, that does not mean he is not on Sintel. He is not on Loyal. That's not how it works. I'm going to make a, sep a separate video about this to show you what other pros are talking about Sintel, but basically that doesn't mean anything. When you see crazy proportions, that's most often uh, site enhancement oil. You will never see that during the 70s or the 80s because it wasn't a thing back then. Today, it's so popular, everybody is using it. You can only notice it in people who are using a little bit much of it. So Patrick posted this photo recently and here he looks very dry. He looks in great condition. I expect him to do really good at the Iron Classic. I love this guy, actually. I like him. I like him very much, the way his physique is. I just uh, want to point out that, that, that this is something I see and uh, that's pretty much it. If you are not agreeing with me, you can dislike the video or tell me down below that I don't know what I'm talking about. It's just my opinion. If you disagree with me, it's okay. You can tell me down below in the comment section. You can dislike the video. You can do whatever the hell you want. I don't care. I don't mind. As long as you keep coming and keep watching my videos, I'm good. So, uh, he posted this photo and here you can see he doesn't look uh, oily that much in this photo because of the pose. But you can still see that the bicep is popping a little bit, uh, a little bit too much. You kind of need to have an eye for this. It's not simple math. Basically, I would show you that his biceps are peaking further than his shoulders are. But that doesn't mean it's on, only Sintel. It's just the proportions. I think if his biceps and triceps were smaller, his body would look more natural. This just doesn't look uh, that normal. But this is just one photo. Uh, in this one, it doesn't look like uh, like oil that much as it does sometimes, especially in the videos. But uh, anyways, that's not the point of this video that much as much as it is what he said about this. So he commented on, on, on his Sintel use. So this guy comments on his photo and he says that there is somebody on YouTube commenting on his physique and saying that he is using Sintel. And uh, this guy, this fan of his, says that he doesn't see it. And Patrick responds to him. He says, finally, someone with sense. Finally, we'll get back to that in a moment. Way back when I was boxing, my arms had size. I trained them every day for years when I didn't know any better. Even in my old posts before, even thinking about bodybuilding, it's easy to tell me my arms weren't small. Idiots, man. Did you get the point of this? Because I didn't, <laughs> but we're gonna analyze it a little bit. So he says, finally, someone with sense. What does that mean? Everybody is telling him that he's on oil, that he's on Sintel. When he says, finally, I mean, that's it. What else could it be? He says, finally, someone with sense. So everybody else is saying that he is uh, looking like he's using oil. I don't know. I didn't really hear that much about other people, but I am the one who was saying it. I don't know. He says, finally. Anyways, way back when I was boxing, my arms had size. I trained them every day for years when I didn't know any better. Even in my old posts, before even thinking about bodybuilding, it's easy to say that my arms weren't small. Well, if his arms were small, now they're big. What is he trying to say? That he grew them? How did he grow them? With the training less? With using Sinto? I'm not sure what's the point of this comment, honestly. But it's definitely a comment about Sinto. If you guys understand this comment a little bit better than me, maybe I'm just a stupid one. You tell me down below in the comment section. But it's a bit confusing what he's trying to say. I can spend 10 minutes trying to understand exactly what was the point of this. But I'm kind of short on time. I'm prepping for my competition as well. So I need to go to train and eat before that. So guys, whatever you think about uh, Patrick, whether he's using Sintel or not, tell me down below in the comment section. Tell me what you think his comment was about. If you have time to analyze it a little, maybe it's some kind of slang that I don't get. If you understand it, please explain it to me down below in the comment section. Also, like the video if you enjoyed it, of course, and subscribe for more bodybuilding videos like this. All the best, guys, and bye-bye.